so my old Logitech G900 started acting weird recently. I've had it for close to five years and I guess it's time to put it to rest. But fortunately, Glorious sent over their Model O wireless and Rokat did the same with their new Comb Pro Air for me to check out. And I thought I might as well make a video on the peripherals that I'm using these days for work as a software developer, but also for gaming. All right, let's have a look. So both of these mice have their advantages, but one thing that's sure is that they're a definitive upgrade from my G900. That was the first mouse Logitech release with their light speed technology, so the wireless connection was pretty solid, but it was quite heavy at well over 100 grams. In comparison, the Comb Pro Air and Model O weighed 75 and 69 grams respectively. That puts them in the same category of lightweight wireless gaming mice, and they do share a few similarities. Both feature RGB lighting, a 19K DPI sensor, PTFE feet, a software to customize the mouse, and latency-free performance with a dedicated 2.4 GHz dongle. However, the similarities stop there. One big difference is their shape, where the Model O is symmetrical and the Cone Pro Air has more of an ergonomic shape. Personally, I prefer the Cone Pro Air's shape, it's more comfortable and grips super well in my hand. The Model O also works well and performance wasn't an issue, but it was a bit more tiring for my hand over long gaming sessions. But again, that's my personal preference, and the new Model D wireless might be better on that part for me. One other big difference between the two is the clicks. The Comb Pro Air switches are optical, while the Model O's are mechanical. Optical switches should actuate faster, last longer, and reduce double clicks. In my tests, I found that the Comb Pro Hair switches were not as tactile and high-pitched as the Model O's, as these feature more of a typical click sound. I'm gaming with headphones, so the difference was minor, but both did not have double-click issues, and they felt super nice. So the Comb Pro Air is quite a bit more expensive at $130 compared to the Model O at $80, and I can say that both are really impressive mice. The Model O is an incredible value, performance is top-notch, it looks nice, the quality is great, and it offers everything I need from a wireless gaming mouse. On the other hand, the Comb Pro Air has all of that, plus Bluetooth support, paired with the ergonomic shape, making it a great option for gaming, but also for general productivity. It also has better battery life, and its body is full, compared to the Model O's Honeycomb cutouts, which I believe won't be as easy to clean over time. So yeah, the Model O Wireless is an incredible value for the money, and I would be happy with it, but the Comb Pro Air does have a few additional premium features that I can appreciate. So now to my gaming mechanical keyboard, the GMMK Pro, which I've been daily driving for gaming since I reviewed it. I changed my initial build a bit, and it's now rocking Duroc L7 switches that I lubed and filmed, as well as Duroc V2 stabilizers. I'm usually tactile gang, but this switch and stab combo feels so good. It's quite amazing. Tactiles feel better for typing for me, but given that this is a keyboard that I use for gaming, linears feel just right for that. And then in terms of keycaps, I am using white on blue keycaps from EPBT. These are ABS and double shot, and they feature a cherry profile. Kind of a cheaper alternative to GMK keycaps. Quality is supposedly a bit lower, and they're not as unique as certain GMK sets. But still, they look amazing in my view. The quality is great for the price, and their top surface feels nice. As for the cable that I'm using, it's from Taro Cable on Instagram. They make custom keyboard cables, and I went with this sky blue color, clear tech flex, and white connectors for a super clean look to match with the EPBT keycaps. They can also make larger coils with various lengths, colors, tech flex, connectors, and all of that. 
The cable you're seeing here would be $67, including free shipping in the United States. And I'm quite satisfied with the cable and can definitely recommend them for your custom cable needs. The best way to get in touch with them is on Instagram, so I'll leave a link down below to their page. As for my mouse pad, it's not the first time I'm featuring it on this channel, but it's from Max and Co. And it was part of a group buy, so it's no longer really available. But I really like its design and it ties in with my blue keycaps and overall blue theme for this desk setup. It's a bit large for this desk, but the quality is great and same thing for the print quality. I would definitely get another mat from them in the future, knowing the kind of quality I'm getting. Now, before having a look at the peripherals I use for software development, Let's hear a word from this video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. It's curated specifically for learning, always ad-free, and they're consistently launching new premium classes so you can follow wherever your creativity takes you. Skillshare has classes on a variety of topics, including web development, productivity, and film and video. One class that I took recently is Nathaniel Drew's guide for content creators on how to speak confidently on camera. I rarely speak in front of the camera, so I thought I might as well practice with this ad. One thing that I found insightful from this class to help loosen up was to show a bit more of my personality through imperfection. And that is probably why I don't talk a lot in front of the camera, as I know I pronounce better when I'm not being filmed. But imperfection is just part of being human, so maybe to more face cam in the future. The first 1,000 people who use the link in my description will receive a one month free trial to Skillshare Premium. Okay, back to peripherals. So with my Mac oriented desk setup that I use for software development, I'm not using a mouse. Instead, I use the Apple Magic Trackpad. If you're used to it, it's truly amazing with the zoom in and side scroll gestures, which I often use either for video editing or software development. I tried using other mice, but it's just so quick with the trackpad that I have a hard time switching to something else. Again, that would only be a good option on a Mac. As for my keyboard of choice for software development, I rely on a 60% keyboard built with a Tofu 60 case. This one is an E-White and it's a little more expensive than the anodized variants, but it looks so good. I'm using one of the first keycap sets that I bought from a group buy, which is Infinity Aether by Alex Sotos. And while I prefer double shot keycap sets, this theme is super unique. These are made from PBT and the legends are all reverse die sublimated, so they should be very durable. In terms of switches, I am using Kinetic Lab Salmon switches that they sent over for me to test. These are tactiles, which I much prefer for typing, and they have a spring weight of 63.5 grams. Speaking of springs, they come preloaded with Kinetic Lab Symmetric Springs for a more uniform force progression. Pretty cool that they come included, as they're an upgrade compared to standard springs. So not only these switches look unique and fun, they come lightly lubed from the factory. I did however lubricate them myself with some carbon GS1 lube. The tactile bump on these Salmons is very pronounced and rounded, similar to Holy Pandas. The penguins I had before had a sharper tactile bump that was shorter. I like both of these switches, but it's nice to switch it up from time to time. They're a bit loud for me, so I might add some plate foam eventually, but other than that, I like them. As for stabilizers, I was using C3 stabs from TKC and they were pretty good, but not as great as Dirac V2s, so I upgraded them while swapping switches. These are the best stabs I've tried yet for sure. All of that on the brass plate for a super stylish look, white and brass definitely looks great. Now, some might say that a 60% keyboard isn't ideal for software development, but I don't really use the Afro nor the numpad, and I've been daily driving 60% for years now, so they feel super natural to me. As for the cable, again, another coiled cable from Taro Cables. Here, we went with a navy colorway with white connectors and shrink. It matches the Tofu case really well, and we were aiming at the navy columns that Aether has, I'm also hoping that I can reuse this cable when GMK Deep Navy arrives. One thing to keep in mind is that clear tech flex does fade a bit the color, so here my navy cable is a little lighter, but still, I like how it looks. 
Finally, under the keyboard and trackpad, I have this Celestial mousepad from Kinetic Labs. I think it matches super well with Aether, kind of the same colors, and with a space theme, you can't really go wrong. It's also 90 by 40 centimeters, and it's 4 millimeters thick. It feels super high quality, and knowing that it sells for $24, I think it's a pretty good deal. So that's it for today's video. Please let me know down below what peripherals you daily drive. I'm curious to see what everyone's using. I'll have links to what I'm using and the parts list for keyboards if you want to build something similar in the description. Otherwise, thanks for watching, make sure you leave a like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, as I'll see you in the next video.